What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be checking out Lens Island. This is one of those games that we had like a very limited demo of it a while back, but the game is coming out in early access very, very shortly and they've given me access to that build so that we can check it out. So we're going to dive on in. If you've never seen the game before, it's kind of a top-down survival game uh, where you can build buildings and you can make a base and there's workbenches and stuff like that. There's dungeon diving. I remember being particularly impressed with the lighting, actually, the last time we played the game. So let's see. We're going to jump in for about 25-30 minutes and see how the early access varies from the demo that they distributed about six months ago. If after watching this you did indeed want to get the game for yourself i'll have a link for you down below in the description so that you can check that on out this is on the pc platform uh, you will also be able to find links to my discord and my twitch stream down there just in case you wanted to hang out live and say hello let's start our 25 minutes off and see if we can knock this thing out of the park what do i want to name my map we'll name it butt world sounds good create new game Okay, so it looks like, where are we from? We can be from the Jaro Islands, Zengard City, the Acacia Plains, or the Garth Hinterlands. Okay, I'm gonna be from the Garth Hinterlands, why not? What is your facial type, masculine or feminine? We can masculine, sure, that sounds good. Do you wear shoes? No, or definitely not. That doesn't seem like much of a, you know what, definitely not, fine. If I'm not going to wear shoes, I'm gonna be decisive about it. It looks like no matter where you choose to come from though, you can actually fully customize your character, so that's good to see. Okay, so we've arrived on a little raft already. This is actually quite a bit different from the demo that I played. Uh, by right-clicking, we can move around. The game uses effectively Diablo-esque movement. Uh, you're not going to be using Wast or anything like that in order to get around. However, I do think it's a good idea that we take a look inside of here. Drag unlocked items in. Okay, sounds good. I mean, it's an inventory. I'm sure that it works in an inventory-like way. Uh, we've got a Bowie knife over here. We've got an axe, and we've got a pickaxe. However... It appears to me that that stuff is already inside my possession, so maybe those are just extras? Now, let's see. Oh, that opens up. Okay, I thought maybe if I clicked the bedroll. Oh, I can. Okay, there we go. All right, I just had, like, selectivity issues. I'm having issues right now. Every time you... Okay, yep, that's, that's cool. That's cool. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. This game has the... So if you've ever played Rust before, this game has a mini game where if you time your swings properly then you can get critical hits, which help you harvest faster. Uh, Rust has a very, very similar system where there's kind of like spots on the rock or like on the tree where if you hit them in rapid succession, it'll come down faster. Uh, there's a busted cabin over here. Kind of having trouble getting through the door, but like, okay, that's cool, that's cool. Uh, is there anything I can do with this cabin over here? It looks like there's debris... And it looks like maybe I can chop it down. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see if we can clear this debris. I can do the critical swing. Oh, nice. Okay, so we got a bunch of wood out of there just from the scrap and the roughage of someone's old home. Am I able to zoom out? I can't. Okay, so the scroll wheel actually makes you swap weapons around here. I don't know if I should just, like, wander from... Is that a critter? What is that? Is that, like, a woodland creature? Oh, it's glass? There's just, like, glass laying on the... Okay, all right, fair enough. Emulation of the real world. There's just glass laying around on the beach. Absolutely. I live in a coastal area, and there's glass on the beach for sure. Uh, let's see if we can get into this thing. What's in there? Oh, we just got some scrap or something. Okay. So if we hit the tab key, it looks like we do have an inventory over here. We actually don't have a stylized, like, tile interface. It looks like we just have sort of, like, universal storage inside of here. It looks like we've got a workbench. It looks like we've got a bed. So I'm thinking it's probably a good idea for us to make a house. That's what I'm thinking. It's like maybe we should get down and make the house thing happen. It looks like we got some berries over here too, dude. I could use some vittles. Vittles sound good to me. Let me grab them berries right there. Ah, it fills up the little yellow meter down there, which is a hunger meter. I had thought that it would be like stamina or something like that because we can do like little dodge rolls and things, I think. I mean, we can do like a little jumpy boy. Ah, Q is our dodge. Okay, well, let me chop down some trees and then I'll come back and we'll maybe try to build like a domicile that we can dwell inside of. 
Now, we don't appear to have any type of map or anything that's going to help us figure out exactly where we are on this island. So we are in a true kind of Robinson Crusoe situation right now where I think we've just got to kind of like figure out where we are, what we want to do. It looks like there's a dock over here. Can I do anything with that? So what's up with the dock? I need 80 wood and I need like a bunch of cattails, huh? Okay. I will strongly consider that. I have the wood already on hand, so maybe we'll try to open this on up, maybe? Like, how many more cattails do you figure I'm going to need? Where's my fibers at? How am I doing with my fiber count right now? Uh, with my fiber count, I just need, like, a little bit more fibers. Is all of this stuff harvestable? It actually appears as though every last bit of it is harvestable. I think we've got, like, marigolds or something right there. I don't know exactly what that flower is, but apparently I've assembled a flower collection. Yeah, fix the bridge. Oh, I like that assembling animation. That looked pretty good. Oh, they got me with the gotcha. I done been got with the gotcha. All right, so apparently there is a second chunk of bridge over there right after I deemed it necessary to use up all my resources. If I wanted to, like, build, how hard is that going to be? We've got a ceiling. Okay. Do we have, like, a foundation or, like, a flooring or anything that I want to put down? There's the wooden foundation right there, but it appears to require some kind of yellow mineral that I don't have access to yet. What is the yellow? It's limestone. Okay, so it's from the water's edge. This is not limestone right here. This is probably just some kind of generic lame rock. I believe this is probably our guy as far as limestone is concerned. I'm guessing that for like this first little phase, we're just going to be doing like a lot of harvesting and gathering. So I may streamline it a little bit with some editing so that we can get into some proper gameplay a little bit later. Although I suppose like the building and the farming process could be counted amongst the idea of, you know, the real gameplay. I don't exactly know what this game is going for in that regard. Like I remember from the demo, there was definitely a dungeon and it definitely had monsters and stuff down in it. And they definitely got violent with you, so... Maybe we'll try to track that down a little bit later, too. Okay, well, as far as dwelling places go, I think this looks pretty good right here. So let's do this. Uh, we'll put this on down, and it looks like we are capable of rotating, like so. But it looks like everything is going to adhere to sort of just isometry. How close to the water can I get that? Oh, I can actually go, like, out on the water. I actually sort of like that idea. Okay. Uh, I want to make sure all the boards are running parallel. Otherwise, you know, I'm just going to feel lame. Why can't I? Oh, there's a bush in the way. Is that what it is? I got to clear that right there. Hold on. I was trying to, you know, I was trying to get all settled in with the crafting system. But, like, this bush is unfortunately getting in the way of my glory. All right. Now we can get back to it. I don't actually know how many of any of this stuff that I have. But... We are ready to rock now, which is great. So I'll probably just go with a little house like that right there. That looks good to me. Uh, we can rotate this right here and have it just sort of be outwardly facing. Did I run out of materials? A dunt ran out of materials. All right, well, I can go get more. That's the nice thing about nature is that it is full of materials that I can steal. Uh, the, the one thing to watch out for, the trees can fall on you. I verified that the hard way. I was just chopping a tree, minding my own business, and then the Ents decided to fight back, man. It was utterly unacceptable. I did not want to enter into a situation where I'm being crushed by living lumber, but alas, that's where I found myself. I'm actually very happy with the way the snapping works in this game. Now, the snapping is quite good. I wanted to put in a window right there, but maybe I'll put in a window later. But we've got our walls in for right now. Like, we are somewhat defended from the elements, so let's figure out what supplements we can put out here. So if I had some more fibers and I had some more scrap, I can do the workbench and I can do the bed. The fibers I can knock out, but the scrap's going to be a little bit more difficult because as far as I can tell, it only comes from barrels that like to kind of lackadaisically hang out in the ocean. So I've actually got to walk the island to go and find those. That's okay. That's the point of these videos. You guys can come along with me. We haven't really gone to the left side of the... We haven't gone to the left side of the island really at all anyways, and so it's probably a reasonably solid idea to just kind of like get a good feel for our surroundings. This does seem to be quite a small island. Luckily, it doesn't look like tides affect the island quite as much as I would be worried that they would affect the island. That would be kind of one of the first things that I would look into if I was in this situation, is I'd just be kind of taking a look around and trying to figure out, like, hey, you know, what can uh, what can go wrong here? Hey, there's a little bit of glass from up on the side. We might be able to get that window that we've been dreaming of, huh? Yeah, so it's not like a little woodland creature that we're finding right there. I think they're like glass bottles and things that are just laying along the shore. 
I am a tiny bit worried about maybe hostile spawning once the dark comes out. I don't know. The amount of bottles and trash washed up on this island kind of... I, I find that to be moderately worrying. Uh, largely because that means that things are coming towards here, so your chances of getting any message off of the island or anything else might be a tad of a bit of a headache. I don't know. If we don't find what we're looking for on the island proper right here, I'll probably just... Oh my god, it gets dark quickly, doesn't it? It gets dark real, real quick, but there's some more scrap right there, so that's good. I have no idea what that colorful stuff is that we just picked up. Oh, it's a precious gem. Okay, so I guess there was precious gems inside the crate as well. I don't know if we're going to be using those as currency as we get further on into the game or how those are going to play into the context bridge closed. Okay, so that must be for the early access. You can't, like, go that way, possibly. That might be the end of the content in that direction. Hey, there's something over here. Like a little dock, maybe? Can I jump that high to get up here? Man, I can't see for nothing right now. It's dark. It's real, real dark. Can I break the door down? Doesn't look like I can break the door down, so I guess this area is just, like, not accessible for right now. I don't know. Well, nonetheless, I have all the stuff that I need to get my crafting benches up and rocking. I did find a bridge on the way back in that says that it goes to a town. So we'll investigate that in a minute. But we've got our workbench right there. It doesn't look like the workbench snaps. So I'm just going to try to get it as close to the wall as I possibly can. That is going to use up all of my wood, though, unfortunately, which I failed to account for. So it looks like this right here is going to allow us to make a refinery, a fireplace. It looks like we've got... A selection of decorations right here for just making the place feel like home. It does look like we can make new weapons, which I think is really, really cool. And then as far as tools go, it looks like we've got the ability to make a iron axe so far. So that, oh, you've got like a collection. Gotcha. So it looks like if you complete the entire collection, you unlock like a legendary version of each of these. No, I take it back. Never. Well, yeah, okay. So if you make all of the iron stuff, you get like a sweet iron axe. If you make all the steel stuff, you get a sweet steel sword, so on and so forth. And it looks like that goes all... There's actually a lot of sets here. There's quite a few little things to work on. And it looks like we've got upgrades, so we can take that even higher level, which is going to unlock more things that we can play around with. All right, cool. Well, I'll get back to it. I'm going to go ahead and, like, chop some more trees and stuff. I've got the stuff together for our sleeping, so that's nice. Uh, we can go ahead and just lock that bed on in, like, right there. Yeah, that seems like a good enough spot for it. I don't really care about putting it anywhere else. Uh, what other things can I craft? Is there anything, like, cool here that we can play around with? So I need scrap, and I need scrap for both of those. For both the refinery and the fireplace, we're going to need some scrap. And it looks like we're going to actually need iron shards in order to make an iron axe. So, I think, I like that little tasteful zoom that it gives you. When you go inside of a building, I notice that it zooms in ever so slightly by like 15 or 20% or so, just so you can get a better eye on like what you're interacting with. I think the bridge that I saw that we can repair was down this way, and this is sort of the way the game polices and sort of teaches you the mechanics, is that you can't really advance until you find all the things that they want you to have. How much stone do I have? Oh, I need five more stone. Well, luckily, there's a stony boy right here. So I'm just going to grasp this real fast. Hello, wild stone. I tame you. And soon, you will be used for people to run their feet across so that they can go across watery areas. I haven't tested out whether or not I can swim because I get the feeling that, like, the existence of all these bridges and stuff sort of implies that, like, swimming is not going to be an option. Oh, wow, we got a lot more bridge out of that transaction than I expected to get. Okay, so there is like a little town over here. Oh, cool. So what's up with you guys? Hello there. Need a hand? Uh, what is this place? Bridgewater Traveler, my name is Gerald, and I'm the mayor in this corner of the world. If you're settling in on the island, beware of the darkness that lurks beneath. Many travelers come to the island in search of power, but none ever return. The town is built for travelers as yourself looking for new beginnings, and the island is a paradise for those who want to live on it. Okay. So the Forgotten Island is that way. We do have, like, barrels and stuff laying around. Maybe I can get some iron or, like, some scrap or something out of this dude. Yeah, come here. Yeah, you belong to me now. I need more scrap so that I can build all the fun stuff like the refinery. Uh, this is apparently for sale. So for 500 bucks, we can buy that little area right there. I don't know what benefit that's going to accord us. Like, it's possible that we're going to be able to do farming or something later on in the game. Over on this side of the island, it looks like we have a market or something. 
Although, there are not a lot of people around. I find that to be a little bit unnerving. Howdy, friend. You know, my friends call me Roach. Goodbye, friend. Okay. So, it looks like I can buy stuff over here. I can get a flail. It looks like I can get the bait and chop. Okay, so these are the fishermen's gears they were talking about. What about you? Ahoy, sailor. Okay. Nothing over there except for a couple of salty sea dogs. There's a blacksmith over on this side. A refined mace. Cool. Take a look around. Okay. Can I, like, buy some iron from you? Oh, I can. I can buy iron shards for ten bucks. Unfortunately, I ain't got no monies. Is there, like, a wood chopper guy around that I can maybe sell some wood to or something? That seems like it might be a good idea. Looks like there's a bunch of treasures up top if I can get the stuff together to get up there. I already have the wood. I just need the fibers. How many fibers do I have? Hold on. Let me take a look at my fiber supplements. I have no fibers, like zero fibers right now in order to get after those treasures. A little bit of a letdown. Wish that I had more fibers. Luckily, uh, everything in nature is made out of fibers, and so if we just stab it violently with our knife, that's how, you know, that's how humanity has interacted with nature for a long time. Well, I found a spooky cave that goes down. Oh my god, I'm starving to death. I should probably do something about that. That's what a smart person would do. What's inside this little area over here? Can I go in there? Uh, it would appear as though the answer to that is no. I cannot go inside the spooky cave that I was actually kind of excited about entering. Feels bad. The good alternative news, besides the fact that I can't go into the spooky cave, is that I do have the stuff together to repair the ladder right here. Although, I know not how to climb it. Oh, I just kept spamming the jump key until I went all the way up. So there you go. We've got access to our resources now. We got a little bit of that. What is that? I fled the island. I hope the others got out safely. This place is in ruins. Concerning. Moderately so. You want to open for me, crate? What you got for me? Oh, dude, it's a crate full of the monies. Nice, dude. Okay, well, we've got a tiny financial come up right here. And we did get some more scrap, so... Altogether, could have gone worse, but could have gone better. So I've wandered around the island for a little bit. Probably about 10, 15 minutes. Just cruised around the island. The city's actually pretty big, and there is, like, a vendor where you can buy or sell pretty much everything. Uh, from, like, food to wood to stone. There's somebody in the town that will buy it uh, for, like, one unit each or, like, one coin each. Uh, so we can farm up some money right now. I'm thinking what I'm going to do is I want to find the dungeon. Like, I very much want to find the dungeon before we finish this off. In the demo that we played originally, the dungeon was just, like, right here on this main island. But I'm wondering if it's not across that bridge over there that we got to fix. So I think I'm going to... Oh, I'm being stung by bees. Wonderful. Apparently, I've annihilated their home, and they feel some kind of way about it. All right, that's fine. I'd be upset. I mean, if some asshole with an axe came by and chopped down my house, I'd be I'd be pretty upset about it too. Like, you would guarantee that there would be some very very irate outgoing phone calls to various parties trying to figure out like, hey, why did someone just chop my house down? So, on a certain level, I can empathize with the bees. That being said, I need their house so that I can build a footpath so that I can find the dungeon because therein I assume we're going to find iron. I sort of remember that from the demo was that inside the dungeon was where you get the iron shards from, but you got to kind of, like, fight your way to them. Well, I had the stuff to fix the bridge, so hopefully this takes us someplace good. Uh, it took us to a house, like a little Roman-looking house, with kind of like a widow's watch on it. Is there anything up here? Nope, except for a swift fall. Well, damn, what was the point of this? One thing that I do think is, like, very much missing is a map. Uh, so there's two things jumping out at me. I like the animations. I like the lighting. I think the character looks really good while he's fighting or whatever. Uh, and also while chopping trees, I think they've accorded everything with the appropriate volume of weight to make everything look very, very natural. Uh, the two things that I think are missing, though, is like when you chop stuff down and you get resources, I'd like it if they vacuum to your character after laying, to the ground or laying on the ground for a second. And then the other thing is a map, which as of right now, I can't seem to locate. Now, it might be a purchasable item that we get from inside the city, but being like, I, I feel like I'm doing a lot of wandering right now. Like, I don't exactly know where I'm going. I'm kind of just like cruising around. But I haven't really been able to find any way to isolate points of interest or things that would be beneficial to my character's progression as of right now. Because, like, 
I don't have a map. So if I could open up a map and I could see where the fog of war is on the map, you know, like, I'm okay with having to discover the map for the first time, but that having been thrown out there, I don't really have any way to do that. And so I get the feeling that I'm retreading ground that I've already seen, like, multiple times here, just trying to find something new. And so I do think a map would kind of lubricate that experience and make it function a little bit better, just being like, oh, okay, I haven't been over here to this side yet. I'm going to go look and see what's over there. But for right now, just kind of aimlessly wandering. And while aimlessly wandering, I appear to have found my way to some kind of cairn or like sacrificial stones or something. I don't know what these are. There's no interaction point for any of these. Maybe it's a respawner for if you die, possibly. Maybe that's what it's for. I don't know. Oh, is that the dungeon? That does appear, uh, it does appear to be the dungeon. All right, well, let's get on in here. We got adventures to have. We've got missing resources. And I would like to find those resources so that I can build myself a refinery and start making some new gear. Let's dive on into this super fun time here. The Ancient Caves. Uh, okay, so there's an equipment chest right there. So that's actually a nice little quality of life thing. Uh, you can equip any gear that you've acquired from that little crate right there at the beginning of what I assume will be the dungeon. Bad guys, you around here? I'm a scared. It's dark and spooky in here. I think we found metal. Yep, that appears to be iron. So that's the stuff we want. Let's grab it. Pretty hefty job actually mining through there. Uh, I don't have a light source, unfortunately, so I can't tell. It looks like there's little outcroppings of ore on this guy. So I'm going to gather both of these real fast. I think those were coal veins right there. Yeah, indeed. We found ourselves some bituminous coal so that we can fuel industry with the power of our flames. Okay, I like the jump animation, though, too. I think the jump animation actually looks fairly solid. There's a lot of games out there where I just, I have real, real misgivings about the jump animation. Uh, what's going on with this guy right here? What do I have to do in order to, I gotta fix another bridge, don't I? You're gonna make me fix another bridge. I have fixed so many bridges today. Apparently, I can air roll to jump across this. All right. Oh, so you can, like, jump out of mid, okay, I guess I don't have to fix it. We've got a bit more coal right there. I'll keep that in mind for later. We can light these lanterns right here. There we go. That'll give us a little bit of eyesight. Anything in this chest? Uh, we got some kind of maybe food or something. I don't know what that was that we just picked up. It looks like it's an herbalism item. It's grapes. Okay, so I guess we can make our own vineyard or something later on. Uh, we also... Oh, there's a monster. Is he hard to fight? It's like a little murloc guy. Uh, it doesn't look like he hurts too bad. Oh, he pulled some kind of essence out of him too. What did we get right there? What is that? Dark essence, a dark and evil substance found from your enemies. It is powerful and dangerous. I wonder if light hurts them. Let's take him over by the lantern. No, they don't appear to display any sort of fear of light. I was thinking because they're like darkness monsters that they would avoid the light just like inherently, like they would stay away from it. But I don't think that's how that works. We got another lantern over here too, I think. There we go. I'm gonna try to keep as many of these lit as possible because I know it's dark for you guys and I haven't yet made for myself. Oh, that hurt. Okay, that was a little bit more stingy than previous strikes. We are running a little bit low on hunger, which kind of concerns me. Okay, those are all dead. Oh, that's a spawner. I wonder if I have to kill it. Hold on. Let me see if maybe I can put a little bit of... Oh, yeah, you can actually attack the hive thing. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting, like, dogpiled, and my visibility is very limited right now. I'm thinking it might be in our best interest to go ahead and make ourselves a torch so that we're not wandering around in the dark anymore. I am liking the fluidity on some of these enemies. Like, I like the little hops and jumps and things they use in order to stay away from you. Like, they feel very, very natural, so that's a nice little detail. Okay, so after our first foray into the dungeon, I brought back some iron and things that we might be able to use for something. Uh, it looks like we do have the availability of... We have 20 shards right there. We could technically make, like, a spear if we could get some fibers. 
I do like the idea of getting a new weapon. As far as the torch goes, we are going to need some fibers. I think no matter what we do here, we're going to need a whole bunch of fibers. So that's what I'm going to dive on into. I do kind of like the collect-a-thon angle that they're approaching from with the game, uh, where you are rewarded for crafting everything. So, like, what ends up happening, and I think this is probably what they were thinking with the design strategy, is what tends to happen is you play a game, and you pick a weapon, and you don't really have any incentive to craft all the other weapons of the same tier. So, like, if you prefer swords, you make a sword. If you make spears, you prefer spears. So on and so forth. And what happens there is that all those other items are effectively wasted development time on behalf of that player. I do like that they incentivize you going out and being like, hey, I'm going to make every single iron item. And then in response to that, you get given like kind of a legendary iron item as a reward. I think that's actually a really, really cool hook. And I can't think of too many other games that have actually incentivized working your way through the, to the tier list quite like that. I, I think that's actually a really, really cool thing and something I would like to see implemented in other games. Uh, what I'm doing right now is I'm just cruising around grabbing berries because my character's starving, and so I gotta fill up that meter. It's also the only way to get my health back. Your food metabolizes in this game, so I've been watching, and as your hunger meter goes down, the amount that it reduces on your hunger meter with each tick is what goes into your HP to give you HP back. And so anyways, we gotta, we gotta keep ourselves well fed here, otherwise we don't really have any inherent means to heal ourselves. Okay, so with the stuff that we've gathered, we can make ourselves a spear. I think that's probably going to be a superior option by comparison to the knife that we have been wielding thus far. Uh, do I make like a little, so that you can get those little boxes that allow you to change out. Oh, I can also make like a farm, okay. Yeah, I should probably do that, too, because it does seem like the berry supply is somewhat dwindling. Like, I don't think there's a ton of berries left. So it might be a really, really good idea. We've also got a shield right there, but I'm not interested in the shield. I'm interested in the torch so that I can see in the dungeon. It's very, very dark, and I'd like to kind of, like, fix that. So the planting system's pretty simple. I made one of these just so I could check it out. Uh, you just click on a spot. It looks like it's like a 3x3, three three, and any of the herbs and stuff that you've gathered along the way, you can just throw into the plot. Uh, I do think it's a really good idea for us to make some blueberries, though. Uh, I did want to figure out... So it looks like when you craft the items, they don't, like, go onto your character anywhere. I think we've got to go back to our equipment chest in order to, like, suit it and boot it. And so that's what I'm going to do, and then we'll head back to the dungeon once we've got, like, our new spear... Although the spear is a two-hander, isn't it? I bet you the spear is a two-hander. So there is a likelihood here that we may not be able to actually equip the torch and the spear simultaneously. Uh, we can't equip them both simultaneously. I'm actually really glad to say he does, he does something that's unheard of in video games. Look at that. He just continues holding the torch. He holds two items at once, which you can absolutely do in real life. And video games never let you do that either. So there's actually a lot of little quality of life, like just common sense things in this game that are actually pretty smartly designed. I like that. Uh, this is Lens Island. Thus far in the early access, I've only had one bug. It was a display bug where a menu wouldn't go away and I had to close out the game and then come back in uh, in order to get rid of it. But it's no biggie because there's like save points everywhere. It does look like in this case... Oh, okay, so I can't wield my pickaxe and my torch at the same time either. Okay, cool. Well, anyways, I really, really like the art style of the game. I think it looks fantastic. I think the animations are really well designed. They've all got the appropriate sense of weight and movement. Uh, the dodging and whatnot feels very, very good too. I'm excited to explore around in the dungeon down here and just kind of see what we can find. Can I jump up there? I can. Oh, so there's little secrety secrets inside the dungeon that you can dig up too. The spear is quite a bit more of a home record than our knife was. I know that's probably no surprise. Like, that's probably really, really obvious is their fall damage. Uh, there is indeed fall damage. Okay, so we verified that as well. That's like one of those things you got to do in every video game the second that you start playing. Is you got to test whether or not there's fall damage. And you got to test whether or not when you walk across a campfire it burns you. That's like gaming 101. You got to dive in and do those things. Otherwise, you're just kind of like wasting your time. Get out of here. Go away. Okay, so it looks like the spear has like a three-hit combo, and on the fourth hit, he does an overhand that does double damage. Okay, all right, so I'd actually be interested in trying out most of the weapons, since there's going to be differentiating combos and whatnot uh, that work for each one. 
I think it's probably a good idea to try out every weapon just to see if there's any combos that sort of suit your fancy and stick out to you as being the kind of thing that you wanted to play around with. But back to my outro. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today we were checking out Lens Island, which is a survival crafting sandbox. Uh, I'm excited to explore the island. I do want to get a little bit further on into it, and I do think that I'll be monitoring the game's progress as it works its way through early access. I will see you all tomorrow with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet. Thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. I really do appreciate uh, I understand that watching these videos represents a time commitment on the part of my audience and my viewers. And so anyways, I do really appreciate the fact that you guys take time out of your busy day to just like sit and hang out with me and remain appraised of whatever the newest, latest, greatest, coolest stuff coming out of the indie genre is. And it's only because you guys decide to tune in every single day that I actually get to do this in any real respect as a job. And I couldn't ask for like a cooler job to get to do every day. So anyways, I'll see y'all later. Thank you for hanging out with me. And that's all I got for right now.